New, 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 new. Okay. Um, if you have an Adafruit account, you can sign up to get an email. Which new, is new, on your news. Price. Yeah, but you have to sign up for it. You must sign up. And we you will have not have sign account. you up. Yeah, we don't do that. We, you have to fight to we sign up. We don't do the pop up thing or anything like that. No. In fact, the X, like the, the sign up box, it hides from you because it's so hard to sign up. That's awesome. But not from us, but when. Oh, you mean, oh, yeah. It's so hard to sign up. Yeah, we're like, you don't really want to sign you up. You don't want to sign up for a newsletter, so, but, but if you really want to, you can. Anyways, so we have that. Um, okay, okay, let's kick it off. This okay. is our new line of products. Uh, this is Stemo. We're going to be talking about this a bunch. However, we wanted to show it to you as we put this stuff in the store. Yeah, so, so we have Lady one. Ada. We've started with one board, and we're going to be putting in more, but I wanted to um, start with the simplest one, the TSL-2561, which is one of our most popular sensors. So we have breakouts for use with breadboards, and like the sensor I'm talking about later, the APDS uh, comes breakout friendly. But we found that a lot of people are starting to use wearable boards like the Microbit, the Circuit Playground, um, uh, Gemma, Flora, and they want to use alligator clips for like really quick prototyping. And people had been using our Flora boards, but they're not really designed for alligator clips. So we thought, okay, let's take um, our flora sensors and make them bigger and easier to use because it's okay usually if your wearable board's a little bit larger um, and just makes it easier to sew even. You have, you know, uh, mounting holes and sew spots. So um, we're going to do a couple of these and a couple different designs and um, they come with a connector. It's a Stemma cable, which we also have in the store. You have that uh, in the store a couple weeks ago, which is a four pin JSTPH cable. And the way I designed it is if you're using um, the Grove system from Seed, which is a really awesome, like hundreds of sensor boards, um, you can use Grove cables in it and they will fit. And then you can use this with your Grove stuff or you can use it with alligator clips or um, sewing. So it's kind of like plug and play slash alligator clip. And then for more advanced people who want to do soldering or they want to have a very small you know, setup, we have the breakouts. And um, all of the stem boards are designed to be five volt or three volt safe because a lot of people are using Arduino still or they're using three volt. Uh, and we're gonna go in through and make sure that we have like circuit Python code for all of these as well. So we can um, use them with circuit Python and maybe even um, make code. So that's all gonna happen. Okay. We only sure. started with one. So this is the so first one. Yeah. yeah, so we get alligator clip pads, uh, two mounting holes, which are just plain holes. Um, the sensor in here, Phil B did a really lovely silk screen. Let me zoom in. Um, and then all the, the pin connections are labeled here and also on the bottom. And um, you, you know it has the default I squared C address labeled because it's a common question. And then you can set the um, uh, I squared C address differently. If you have a soldering iron and you're more advanced and you want to do that, uh, you can do that. We don't do that for you by default. And then, so this is the TSL 2561 Lux sensor, but you're gonna see we're going to do a bunch of other yeah. different sensors yeah what we found talking to educators was sometimes they can solder sometimes they can do alligator clips and sometimes they just want to plug stuff in so yeah we got it all so instead of trying to fit everything into like breadboard slash sewing slash plug and play we're going to keep with the breadboard friendly breakouts that are they're very advanced they have everything and then for simplicity like you know there's an interrupt pin on this chip we don't expose it because like not a lot of people need it <coughs> so this is for basic projects, beginners, yeah. teaching, and um, because it has all the protection circuitry, um, you know, I connected like 12 volts in all sorts of different ways and you can't break it very easily. Stemma is kind of like Gemma and it's stem. Yay. Yeah, it's round. It works with Gemma. Yeah. And uh, so we'll see more of those, but we're going to start with the first one. Just like the feather line, you know, we, we release one and then we'll release more. And yeah, more. we have like 52 feather wings now. We, I think we have 75 75 total, feather wings? Total boards, yeah. So there'll be more stems for Stemma. And there's a new feather wing coming next week. Okay. All right. Next so that's up. the Stemma. Noah and Pedro did a video a long time ago, hydro dipping for fidget spinners and other 3D printed things. And well, now we have the materials to let you do that. Yes. So It looks like a white it, rectangle. It looks like a piece of paper, but it's more but than it's that. But it's more than a piece. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so you get this uh, A4 paper. Um, so it's a nice big sheet of paper, but it'll fit in like almost every printer. And uh, you print your design on with inkjet, and it, you know colors are great. Uh, it works best with kind of abstract or repeating patterns. 
just because if you're trying to like line up your shape with the ink yeah. outline, it's going to be tough. Like it's very, it's hard to really, because you're doing it in an angle, it's not easy to get it lined up. So that's why for the image of the fidget spinner, it's kind of got this circuitry. Yeah, it works great. Paint, you know, that works perfectly because it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly wrapped, aligned, you know, a certain way. But anyways, just something to watch out for. And um, you get 10 sheets that you can cut and reuse. So you don't have to use one project per sheet. You can put like four projects on it if it'll fit and then cut them out and do them separately. And um, you use it in your inkjet printer. It takes a little bit of practice, but we have a video <coughs> yeah. with Noe and Pedro that teaches you a lot of how to use it and some good tips and tricks. But it does yeah. take a couple tries. But you can clean it off and, and try again. So, so practice with something that isn't your gold-plated heirloom watch and then move on to the heirloom watch. Okay, next up. Hydro dip. We have an update. We have put these Pi Zero packs back in the shop and we've also updated them. Yeah. Um, they're the Pi Zero Classic, not the Pi Zero W. Um, we basically just, I think, updated the, you know, the power supply and the contents and it comes with our case now. Uh, so I think we we uh, the price is a little bit higher because the kit comes with the case now. Yeah. So it's a couple of bucks more, but it's a very nice complete kit. So you get the budget and the starter kit for Pi Zero. Okay. And then we also have the Pi Zero W. This one is without wireless, but it's less expensive. Yep. People ask for it. They're like, when is it coming back? It's back. Okay. Next up, we have uh, a refresh, an update. Update. This is a long time coming, but yeah. we finally did it. Uh, we've updated... The Pi Thermal Printer Kit, it is, um, that's the old kit, but we have a new kit that has even fewer parts, it's easier to put together, and it now works with, um, it has a, a CUPS printer, so it's uh, much better quality printing and much smoother. It works with the Pi Zero, Pi Zero W is a really good um, board to use it with, yeah. Pi 3, Pi 2, Pi B Plus, so it's, you know, it's the mechanically it's changed. Um, the same thermal printer, the power supply is smaller, so it's not as chunky and expensive, and that's really nice. Uh, we have a four amp power supply in the shop that works perfectly well. Um, I can show some of the output. On yeah, let's go to the overhead. Okay, let's go to the overhead. Um, we have it set to print our tweets. Yes, yeah, so I can show from earlier when I was running this. So this is the, um, it went to the Pi Zero W. So the Pi Zero W is a really good board to run it with because uh, it can be nice and small, but it still has that wireless connectivity, so it does wireless printing. And then we've got our thermal printer in here, um, a nice enclosure that you can put together with a screwdriver, um, this nice cloud. And then you know, this is an example of the output. We'll have, um, when we put it in the shop, we'll probably have a video demo as well. But um, for this one, it starts up, it gives you the forecast, it prints your Sudoku puzzle for the day, and then it will print out um, your daily tweets. And then you can uh, request, you know, the weather and current status um, by pressing the button if you want to sort of give an update. Other than that, it'll just sort of print tweets whenever, and every six hours it'll, it'll print you the forecast. So we're going to put this back in the shop, sign up, because we're going to put start printing kits in very soon if you would like to build this. But uh, I like we did a refresh, and it's better than ever. Okay. Next up, we have alligator clips. More of them. This is a pack of 18, so you get six colors, three pieces. Um, we had some people request that they're like, well, you have 12, but I need a little bit more than 12. So we have 18 now. It's 50% more, but you get 50% more clips. That's kind of it. These are nice clips. Okay. They're good quality. They're nice and rubbery. They're not too hard to open. The clips are the yeah. small. Assorted colors and more. Lots of different colors. Next, uh, what, are you, uh, what are these? We have also APA 102 dots on a cut uh, tape tiny. strip. So we have stocked these in 10 piece parts, but there's some people who are like, hey, I really need 100 pieces or more than 10, and I don't want to keep getting these small strips. Especially if you have a small pick they want something place. Like this. They want to make something like this. They want to make something like this that has 64 pixels yeah. or more. So this is not what you get. This is what you get. But if you want to make but this, you want to make this, you, you got to go with this. So these are the you smallest go digitally addressable um, pixels I've ever seen, but they're yeah. the same cost okay. as NeoPixels. They use the dot star protocol, but they're nice and bright, and they're very small, and you can, you know, the pins are arranged in a good way. You can kind of put them next to each other and chain them very easily. So they're chainable digital LEDs, and you can see the chip there, and then um, 
the chip in the is the kind of the top kind of tan rectangle and then below that are the, the yeah. red green and blue dye so you get so full what, color control that's what that is uh, so if you want a whole bunch of neopixels I can show them on the overhead but they're just really small yeah you want to do that yeah we got a call Adam and get a giant electron microscope to show some of these yeah products. they're just they're just really Look, teeny it's magic dust these these are like you know the bare ones but it comes in a, a strip so they're nicely organized and and packaged for you so I'm gonna keep these for prototyping but uh handy for for those who need it so those who requested it now you can get a hundred okay next uh the start of the show tonight beside you lady da, 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 da. The APDS 9960. I started this design, I think, like three years ago, but I finally put it in the store. Um, thanks to Dean for helping me wrap this one up. This is a really cool all-in-one sensor. Um, it's one of the most chock full of sensor sensors we've got. It's got a light sensor, a color sensor, an IR sensor, a proximity sensor, and a gesture sensor, all in one. And it doesn't cost that much more than like any one of those sensors on their own. And um, you get all in a nice little package here. We have an Arduino library for it. It's got, uh, so the light sensor is pretty simple. It's just like clear light sensing for, you know, just ambient light. It's got a red, green, blue filter sensor. So you can use it to, if you shine light on something, the color light will reflect off and then you'll be able to detect it. So you can uh, detect the color of objects or detect the color of light if you want to do uh, um, like color matching for like tungsten light versus fluorescent light, you can detect uh, light temperature or light color. Uh, the IR sensing is interesting. So it's got four IR sensors, up, down, left, right. It's got, you know, in a grid and it shines the IR LED. You can see that it's the bottom little dot of the sensor. It shines it and then it can detect the amount of light that is hitting all four of those sensors, which means that with a little bit of code, what you can do is sense the changes across those four. And by sensing those changes, you can kind of tell something moving in front that's bouncing the IR light. You can sort of tell which way that thing is moving. So not only can you tell if something is close or far, like proximity sensing, but you can also do uh, you know, very basic um, motion and gesture sensing. So I have a little demo that okay. I can show. So this is, um, so you can actually see the little IR dot because in IR mode. And I have this hooked up to, you know, just my feather with an OLED. And this is tricky. I hope this, this works. It's, a little, it's always a little tough with these, these gesture down. sensors. Left, right. So you can see, you can move a little slowly, but it does detect which way you're moving. And then I can go up, down, up, yeah. This is yeah. cool. So you see, it's like it doesn't catch all of them, and I have to not bump into the wires. Yeah. Uh-oh, I think I just bumped into the wires and I reset it. Maybe. Hold on. There you go. Left left and it's right good are trick. good. Let me do up and down. Oh, I just have to move slowly enough. And if you move in the right speed and, you know, a couple inches above it, you can um, detect the direction by like looking at those levels. So we have up, down, left, right as a gestures built into the library, but you do get that raw data. So, you know, if you wanna make your own uh, sensing directions, you could have it do like, you know, circular motion or like zigzag motion or, you know, close and left. You can do all sorts of stuff um, like tilted, as long as you can measure those four cardinal location IR sensors that are, are in the package here. So it's, it's kind of a neat sensor. It's got a lot going on in it. Uh, and so I like it, it's a really good price. Yeah. So you get a lot with the sensor. Uh, so we have Arduino code. So if you are using this with any microcontroller that uses the Arduino IDE, they'll just work. Okay. And with that lady, it is new products. Good work. You did it. Oh.